welcome to the second installment of A Gilded Age Village, a video series exploring the relationship between the Statsburg estate and the nearby hamlet of Statsburg. My name is Zachary Veith. I'm a historic interpreter here at Statsburg State Historic Site, together in partnership with the Statsburg Library. In our previous video, we looked at some of the businesses that made the hamlet thrive during the Gilded Age. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some of the everyday places and events for the local people and the Mills family. Statsburg was just one of the five homes for the Mills family, including a New York townhouse, Newport summer home, Ogden's father's California estate, and a mansion in Paris. When they were here, often in the fall or winter seasons, they were noted as not particularly visible people around the village, but they truly cared about the town and gained a reputation for their kindness towards the residents. Those who remembered the mills talked about their generosity in the village, gifts of food, water, even coal during the harsh winters. Anything anyone needed, they were there to help. At the time, Ogden was the wealthiest estate owner in Statsburg, outdone only by the Vanderbilts to the south in Hyde Park. In 1908, during a bad drought, the Dinsmores and Mills carted water to those who asked, greatly helping the townspeople. They paid several hundred dollars for new sidewalks in the village, as well as a row of trees down one of the streets. After seeing a woman carry heavy pails of water on her property, Ruth financed the connection of that family's home to the new municipal water system. However, Ruth also, in 1918, placed speed limit signs north and south of the village, which one newspaper reported was ignored by motorists. Their estate became a gathering place for residents. St. Margaret's Church had their annual picnic at least once at the Mills Riverside Cove, and we have oral histories of ice skating down in the cove when it froze over during the winter. During a scarlet fever outbreak in 1901, Ruth even banned residents from skating there due to a fear of contagion. She even asked to have the public school books burned, which was a common practice to prevent the spread of scarlet fever at the time. Either way, Ruth and Ogden were fixtures in the village through their good deeds and public support. Sadly, a major connection of the mills to the village has been destroyed, the train station. For decades, the train was the main transport for the village before automobiles were widely available. Residents remember taking it down to Poughkeepsie for the day, to the theater or for shopping, or tourists coming north to get away from the city. The mail was delivered via the train and dropped in sacks in front of the old post office nearby. Before the Statsburg school went to 12th grade, students took the train down to Poughkeepsie in order to attend the last two years of high school for half-price fare. Just north was a freight station and warehouse for cargo, attesting further to the commercial business of Statsburg at the turn of the century. The original wooden train station was likely built soon after the Hudson River Line reached Statsburg around the 1840s. This was demolished in the 1880s or 1890s for the first brick station. In 1913, that station was demolished with the addition of two more tracks, demonstrating the popularity of trains for the Hudson Valley. The new station built that year resembled the exterior of the Hyde Park train station with a similar interior to Poughkeepsie Station today. There was even an underground passageway under the tracks for pedestrians. The train provided the wealthy estate owners with easy access between their New York City homes and their country estates in Statsburg, especially the mills. Ogden and Ruth often attached their private parlor rail car to regularly scheduled trains out of Pennsylvania Station, and Mr. Mills liked to have Ben Wiseman, his chauffeur, drive fast through the village. Everyone knew Ogden took a particular train weekday mornings to Manhattan and knew to stay off the road a few minutes before the train departed because Wiseman would be at top speed from the estate 
to the station. In 1907, Gladys Mills, Ogden and Ruth's daughter, married Henry Carnegie Phipps at St. Margaret's Episcopal Church. She and her father rode in a beautiful coach to the church. When the who's who of Gilded Age society arrived for the wedding, including J.P. Morgan, Andrew Carnegie, members of the Vanderbilt family, former Vice President Levi Morton, and Mr. and Mrs. Ralph Pulitzer, a son of Joseph Pulitzer, for whom the prize is named, they arrived by private train car on December 7th, 1907. In the cool December air, they then walked through the lovely village to the church. However, by mid-century, reduced services left the Statsburg station underutilized. Although in excellent condition, the Statsburg station was demolished in 1960. The likely reason was property taxes. Limited use of the building, combined with rising costs, resulted in the sale of numerous train stations along the Hudson River at the time. One local historian, David Lund, recalled that the station was even offered to Ralph Osterhout Sr. for one dollar, but he refused because of the property taxes. Aside from Statsburg, this is perhaps the most visible legacy of Ruth's family in the hamlet, St. Margaret's Episcopal Church. Designed by famed Gothic Revival architect Richard Mitchell Upjohn and built of local stone, the cornerstone was laid in 1891. Inside of that, there is a Bible, a Book of Common Prayer, church hymnal, and copies of the New York Tribune and Poughkeepsie Eagle, local newspapers. Because of Ruth's grandmother's founding of the original mission, the interior is filled with memorial plaques to the Livingstons, notably Matron Livingston, Ruth's grandfather, and the husband of St. Margaret's Mission's founder, Margaret Lewis Livingston. St. Margaret's became one of the few places in the village where the mills could be regularly spotted. Ogden Mills and his son O.L. Mills served as vestrymen for decades. O.L. Mills is also named on the plaque inside honoring local veterans of World War I. He left his comfortable New York State Senate position to serve as a U.S. Army intelligence captain in France. His sister, Gladys, as mentioned earlier, had her wedding here. Family lore states Gladys went horseback riding the day before against her mother's wishes and broke her nose, and thus we have no photographs from that day. On the south side are the medieval stained glass windows gifted by Ogden Mills. In the 1920s, after Ruth died in Paris, Ogden was devastated. He arranged for her body to be brought back in a private stateroom filled with flowers and bought a pair of stained glass windows from rural French cathedrals, their exact origin is disputed, and had them installed here in her memory. The first set depicts St. Peter, likely from around the 13th century, with two unidentified saints, from later in about the 15th century. Below it is the inscription In Memoriam Ruth Livingston Mills from Ogden. The second set depicts St. Peter, St. Paul, and St. Bartholomew, all from around the 13th century. Below it is the inscription In Memoriam Ruth Livingston, leading us to believe this was a memorial by Ogden to his mother-in-law, also named Ruth, who passed away shortly before her daughter in 1918. We end today with this building. It may look familiar to residents as the Statsburg Library. Built in 1858, it was originally the St. Margaret's Mission, a church. Notice the pointed ecclesiastical windows on the south and west sides. The mission was the first house of worship in the growing village, financed by Margaret Lewis Livingston, Ruth Mills's grandmother mentioned earlier. This demonstrates the growing influence and legacy of the Lewis Livingston family in Statsburg. By 1891, the congregation outgrew this chapel. It was turned into a reading room for the village and charted as a library in 1894 by New York State, and a new church 
the current St. Margaret's, was constructed across the street. If you lived in the village at the turn of the century, worshipped at St. Margaret's, or rode the train even, it's likely you knew an employee of the mills. You yourself were probably employed by them, or one of the other Gilded Age estates along the Hudson River. In our next video, we'll be taking a look at the lives and homes of several employees of Ruth and Ogden who lived in the hamlet. So stay tuned.